Hello, and thank you for stopping by. My name is Vivi Kachi, and today I will tell you another Grimm Brothers fairy tale, The Golden Goose. You may have heard this tale reference, but perhaps you've never heard the actual story. So without any further ado, we shall get started. It all begins with a family that has three sons. The elder sons were thought of very highly by the family but the youngest one was regarded as foolish and unreliable, and the family thought very little of him. One day, the family home was running low on firewood, so the eldest son volunteered to chop some in the forest. His mother made him a lunch with a sweet pancake and a flask of wine, and sent him on his way. As he walked through the forest, the eldest son came upon a small gray old man. If by chance you have some food and drink, would you share it with me? The old man asked. I am hungry and thirsty. Leave me alone, old man. I have no food or drink to share. The eldest son replied rudely. He left the old man standing and charged deeper into the woods, where he came upon a suitable tree to chop down for firewood. However, when he began to hack at the tree with his axe, the eldest son fumbled and hit his arm with the axe head. The wound was as such that he needed to rush home right away to have it clean and bound. The next day, the second son went out into the forest to gather firewood. His mother made him the same lunch as his, uh, as his older brother, and he came upon the same old man that his brother had the day before. If by chance you have some food and drink, would you share it with me? The old man asked the second son. I am hungry and thirsty. Whatever I give to you, I will lose myself. Please be off with you, the young man replied. He left the old man, just as his brother did, and went further into the forest. When he began hacking at a tree with his axe, the second son fumbled and sent the blade into his leg. His wound was as such that he practically needed to be carried out of the forest, and when he was home, he had his leg cleaned and bound like his brother's arm. The next day, the youngest son volunteered to go into the forest for the firewood. His mother and father refused to let him go at first, but the youngest tenaciously begged for permission. After a whole day of the youngest son's pleading, his mother and father relented. For the youngest son's lunch, his mother made him a plain cake out of only flour and water and baked it in the ashes, and to drink she gave him sour beer. The young man took these with him into the forest. While he searched for the suitable tree, he came upon the old man as his brothers, the same old man as his brothers. If by chance you have some food and drink, would you share it with me? Asked the young, the old man asked the young man. I am hungry and thirsty. All I have is a cake made of flour and water and sour beer, the youngest son offered. If that is good enough for you, I will gladly share. Oh, thank you. The old man sat on a nearby log and offered a seat to the kind young man. As the young man sat with his new friend and brought out his food to share, the plain cake suddenly became a sweet pancake, and the sour beer became fine wine. The pair ate and drank the rich food and drink. Because of your kindness, I will bestow upon you some good fortune, the old man said gratefully. Over yonder, there is an old tree. 
When you cut it down, a prize will be waiting for you at the roots. The young man went to the tree that the old man described and felled it as instructed. When he looked at the roots of the tree, he found a goose with pure gold feathers. He picked up the avian treasure and left for an inn where he planned to spend the uh, entire night. Everyone there was captivated by the golden goose, especially the innkeeper's three daughters. They could not stop thinking about it all day. When night fell, the eldest daughter decided that she would just pluck one of the feathers from the goose. She crept up to the bird and grabbed its wing. But as she began to pull one of her feathers, she discovered her hand was stuck to the goose. It was as if someone had glued her to its wing. Just then, the middle sister walked into the room with the same intention as her older sister. Before the elder sister could warn her about the bird, the middle sister grabbed her sister's shoulder to steady herself as she tried to pluck a, her own feather. And so she found herself stuck. When the youngest sister walked into the room and the two older sisters tried to warn her to stay away, they found that she found out too late why and grabbed the hem of her uh, middle sister's dress and became stuck to her. All three sisters remained in this predicament all through the night. In the morning, the young man retrieved the goose, and the sisters had to go with him because they were all still stuck to the bird. When the young man and the sisters ran through the fields, a parson spotted the spectacle. Shame on you ladies for chasing after a man like that. The parson reprimanded, for to him it looked as though the ladies were being indecent. The, <clears throat> the parson promptly ran to the youngest and grabbed her hand to pull her away. Immediately, when he grasped the young lady's hand, the parson discovered that he too was stuck and had to run with the ladies who were attached to the goose which was carried by the young man. As they continued to run around, a sextant spotted the lot of them. Shame on you, parson, for how far you have fallen to chase ladies like that, the sextant berated, and he proceeded to grab hold of the parson's coat to drag him away. No sooner had he touched the parson's clothes did the sextant realize he was also stuck to the group and also had to run with the parson who was stuck to the ladies who were stuck to the goose which was carried by the young man. The sexton and the parson called out for help to anyone who would listen and it just so happened that two farmers heard their cries and they tried to pull the man away only to get stuck to the sexton. Uh, the sextant, who was stuck to the parson, who was stuck to the ladies, who were stuck to the goose, carried by the young man. As the group continued to run into town, the young man heard a proclamation from the king that his extremely somber daughter, that had never laughed, was looking for a husband, and whomsoever could make her laugh will have her hand in marriage. He then decided to take the goose with all the people attached to see this princess. And when the princess saw the young man carrying the golden goose to which the three sisters were attached, to which the parson was attached, to whom the sextant was attached, to whom the two farmers were attached, her royal highness began to laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> However, the king did not want his daughter to be married to a low-born young man. So, when the young man came to claim his bride, 
the king set a task for him. The young man was to bring to him someone who could drink a whole cellar of wine. The young man thought back to the old man who gave him the golden goose and traveled back to the forest to see if he could help. Upon entering the forest and returning to the tree he felled, the young man found a different man who was forlorn and sitting on the tree's roots. What's the matter? the young man asked. The forlorn man answered, I have a horrible thirst that I cannot quench. Cold water does not agree with me. I drank a cask of wine already, but how could a drop like that sustain me? I can help you. Come with me, and you will have your fill, the young man offered. And he took the forlorn man to the king's wine cellar, and the young man watched as his new friend drank every last drop in the room by the time day was done. At this, the young man once again claimed his bride, but the vexed king gave him another task to complete. The young man must find someone who could eat a mountain of bread. The young man wasted no time in returning to the tree he felled, and sure enough, he found another sad man who had fastened a, a tight strap around his body. I have already eaten every crumb in a bakery, the sad man told the young man. But what good is all that when I am still so hungry? My stomach feels so empty that I had to wear this tight strap so that I may not die from hunger. Follow me then, the young man cheered. I know where you can get your fill. And with that, the sad man followed the young man to the king's courtyard where the mountain of bread was prepared. To make such a mountain, all the meal in the kingdom was used. The man from the forest sat before the mountain and feasted upon it. At the end of the day, the mountain was completely devoured. The young man, for the third time, claimed his bride. But the exasperated king came up with another task. Find a ship that can sail on sea and land. The king commanded, Only then will you be able to marry my daughter. Undaunted, the young man traveled to the tree. He felled once more. This time, the old grain man, with whom he shared cake, sat at the roots. I have drunk for you, I have eaten for you, and now I will give you the ship that can sail on the sea and land. The young man smiled. I do all of this, because you are kind to me from the very start. The old man gave the young man the ship that could sail as requested. When he presented the ship, the king finally relented and gave his blessing for the marriage which took place on the spot. The young man and his new wife lived long and happy lives from then on. The end. Thank you for listening, and thank you again for stopping by. If you want to reach out to me about any story requests, or if you have any questions, comments, c criticisms, or concerns, please don't hesitate to comment below, or you could treat, <clears throat> tweet me <laughs> at wackadoodle. Um, I also want to show here a picture of the progress I've made while uh, crocheting off screen, we'll call it. <laughs> I will be starting a new project soon, so that will be exciting. I hope to see you in the next video, and if you want to be notified of any new posts, please consider subscribing to the channel or following my Twitter. Until next time, I hope you have a lovely day.